Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another more of an overview to share with you guys. Normally what I do on this channel, if you're new, I do a full review uh, of the knife and give all the specs and information. But this is uh, a Hinderer XM18 3.5 inch, specifically the new Bowie, which they have not done in 20CV in the Triway before. They have done it in a vintage series, right, but as of the time of this recording, uh, the uh, 20CV Bowie, this is the first time they've done this blade shape and this steel in this generation, right? Um, I have reviewed the XM18 over and over and over again. I have a full playlist consisting of hinderer knives on this channel. You're welcome to go take a look if you want to get my full detailed thoughts. This is just going to be an overview. We're going to talk about this version of the knife here really quick. Um, this knife was sent to me by at sharp underscore marbles on Instagram. Please give him a follow. It's because of people like him that I'm able to bring you guys daily knife content. It's also because of my generous patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me right now. If you'd like to get your hands on some cool stickers and other benefits, there's of course a link right down in the description. You're supporting me in the world to me. And please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. All right, so this is the same, you know, generation six XM18 uh, that we've all, you know, come to know. If you're not familiar with Hinderer knives, uh, Hinderer Knives makes uh, folding knives in the United States. Uh, they use premium materials such as titanium and in this case, CPM 20 CV. Uh, everything is made in house through Hinderer Knives except for I think the bearings that come in the Triway pivot system. Uh, what's the Triway pivot system? It's this symbol right here. Uh, this knife actually comes with all the hardware that you would need to switch out the internal pivot uh, from a bearing system to a washer system to a nylon washer system, right? You can kind of have what you want. Um, for that reason, they are pretty expensive substantially more expensive than um, your production knives or even high-end production knives. These knives come in at base at around 400, actually right at $425. But that certainly doesn't seem to stop people from enjoying them. So, uh, I mean, I'm a great example of that. Um, myself and many people enjoy Hinderer knives. Um, and uh, you know, yeah, they're made in the United States. So that's great. So I'm, I'm happy to support uh, Hinderer knives. Um, I'm also really happy with, of course, their consistency and quality, and this is more of the same. We have a perfectly centered blade. We have early but solid lockup, no blade play up, down, left, or right. And as you can see here, for those of you who remember Hinderer knives from generation four and their subpar flipping action, um, you'll be pleased to know that the flipping action on these guys is excellent. Um, you can absolutely do it this way. And I think, can I even get the reverse flick? Boy, it's still, pretty heavy it's still pretty hard to do the reverse flick on these guys you probably if you're going to do that you're probably going to want to go with a non-flipper those have uh, lightened up detents and are easier to do that with but anyways yeah um the bowie was a really popular blade i mean most of the blade shapes that hinder knives uh, has done in the past have been really popular but the bowie i think was exceptionally popular you have this very long sort of swooping clip point blade um much less material to tip but you know your your you know Basically, your puncture tasks or, you know, your breaching tasks are going to be a little bit easier, uh, you know, to do with a, a blade like this. Anyways, um, we're just going to go over a few things here, talk about it a little bit. Hinderer knives, every, uh, I'm not sure if this exact version is available at the time of this video, but it will undoubtedly be available at again be available again if it isn't. So I will link Hinderer Knives, everything that you can get through Hinderer Knives um, right now as far as the retailers that I work with right down in the description so you can check that out if you want to. Um, the measurement on the sky, we'll go ahead and do that for anybody who's not aware. Overall length of a Hinderer XM18 is coming in at eight and a quarter inches. Overall blade length is coming in at exactly three and a half inches. And your cutting edge, thanks to the very generous forward choil on this guy is coming in at about three, a little less, it's like a little less than three and a quarter, right? Um, your size comparisons, and we'll do a couple of here up against the rat for people who don't know. Rat one coming in at 8.6 inches overall. Let's do the PM2. PM2, where is it? PM2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall. And we'll do one more. How about the Spyderco Para 3? Spyderco Para 3 coming in at seven and a quarter inches overall. Um, how does this guy, you know, this guy has a, a little bit different blade shape and sometimes you find variances in weight, little minor variances. This guy's coming in at 5.36. Um, here's a Hinderer Eclipse, uh, 5.33. And then here's a non-flipper 
uh, XM18, curiously coming in a little heavier at 5.43, but that's probably because there's more material out of the tip on this guy versus this guy. Um, this video today is going to be kind of just comparing different, I've got so many different blade shapes of XM18 um, with me right now, I just figured I would give you guys an example of a few of the different blades. There's, there's a lot more blade shapes than just the ones I'm laying out on the table here today. Um, but uh, I'll give you guys an example and kind of comparison versus some other blade shapes that I've got in my possession. Um, so we have a spear point. In this case, is a fullered spear point. It's very, very similar to the standard spear point uh, profile that you get through Hinder Knives. This is a DLT trading exclusive. We have the Spanto. We have the Harpoon Spanto. And then, of course, we have the Bowie. And then we have a Harpoon Tanto on this Eclipse, which is just a, it's, it's a different model, but similar in a lot of ways to the XM18. Um, your uh, thickness between all of these guys, this is a standard thickness Bowie, meaning 165 thousandths. That's the same with these guys. A lot of you guys know that there are skinny variants of the XM18 that come in at 145 thousandths on the spine. And there are a few different blade shapes that you can get with skinnies. I don't think the Bowie is one yet. And then there's also a fatty, um, which uh, is 187 thousandths on the spine. Um, more, it's actually the same thickness as the XM24, which is the longer model. Um, the Bowie also has not uh, taken form, you know, taken a fatty form yet, right? So the thickness between all the standard uh, ones is all the same. Um, the, the, what, what varies greatly between all these blade shapes is, I would say, the material at the tip, right? So you can see there, tip thickness is similar, but then the total material between some of these, do each one of these, like here's the uh, Harpoon Span. So total material at the tip is very different, right? So I would say the Harpoon Spanto is definitely a little bit thicker at the tip and it's also why there's more material this way. The Spanto absolutely very different at the tip. The Spanto is definitely the most robust blade shape that you can get through Hinderer knives. Um, and then the spear point, just a little bit less thickness at the tip uh, than the Spanto, but still substantially thicker than the Bowie, right? And more material. So um, these, uh, you know, uh, the Bowie is probably it's hard to say I'll, I'll i'll say that the bowie is probably the most delicate at the tip but that doesn't mean that the the blade shape in general is delicate um i would say hinder knives in general especially the spanto are just massively overkill you know in terms of tip thickness and I, i'm somebody who appreciates that i'm a big hinderer fan so that's something that i really like um, but uh, the, the Bowie, while being thinner, you know, just having less material at the tip than the other blade shapes is certainly not what I'd consider delicate by any stretch of the imagination. Um, the, really, the benefit is that it's just going to be easier to do puncture tasks, right? These still tend to be fairly thick down here um, behind the edge, right? I mean, there's not nearly as much room, like even versus the spear point, I would say the spear point I've got is probably the sliciest of the blade shapes that I've shown here today. The slicer grind is definitely going to be the thinnest behind the edge, especially in the skinny form. This standard thickness Bowie, the flat is more prominent uh, here than, in, actually I think the flat is probably about this in the same area as the Spanto and probably the Harpoon Spanto, right? So it's going to be just about as thick behind the edge as all of the blades that you're seeing here, which is... Not thin. For anybody who doesn't know, uh, the standard thickness XM18s are not necessarily performance slicers, but they are very well sharpened, and they definitely do slice. It's the geometry that's going to slow you down if you're doing re you know, repetitive cutting like breaking down cardboard boxes, but can it still do it? Absolutely. These knives are more at home in an outdoor hard use setting where versatility is the, the, the name of the game, right? Um, but uh, I think uh, the main reason that most people will be attracted to the Bowie, because whether or not hinder knives are performance oriented is, you know, it's kind of out the window. They, they are. Uh, hinder knives actually have, uh, there's an enormous amount of information out there where you can, you know, watch people using them. You can go look at pictures of hinder knives that have been beat up for years and they just keep going and going and going. And that's part of the reason why I like hinder knives so much. Um, is uh, not only is the quality consistent, right? And not only do you have all of the options for interchangeable parts, right? They're expensive, but it, you know, if you're gonna pay for it, you can get pretty much exactly what you want. Blade shape, finish on the blade, color of the scale, t uh, material on the scale. In this case, we have titanium. Um, lots of different colors for parts. You can have different, you know, there's different anodizing options for the other side, right? You have the tri-way pivot system. Very, very customizable, very versatile. And uh, like I said, 
there's a, an insane amount of uh, you know data and, and evidence of these things being used hard and consistently. Um, their quality is just really, really good. Um, that coupled with the fact that they're made in the United States just makes me happy to continuously purchase them over and over and over again. But anyways, I think the main reason that people you know are going to be attracted to the Bowie is simply because the blade shape is wildly different than you know the a lot of the other blade shapes that we see with hinder knives. I mean, for example, here these three blade shapes are relative are you know relatively similar in profile you know versus the the one with the harpoon notch. But this massive swedge, people are really going to like that, um, and people really do like that. I, I think this is probably. Of all the blade shapes, I, I do have a, an upload of all the different blades, uh, all the different um, blade shapes that have ever come out on a Hinderer XM18, and that's again in that Hinderer Knives playlist. Um, but this one is probably the most visually striking. Um, I also really like this area right up here where you rest your finger. For whatever reason, I mean, I've always complained that the forward choil on the flipper, the ones with the non flippers, it's a little easier to comfortably get in there because the flipper tab's not in the way. For my fingers, it's just barely the right amount of room where I can comfortably uh, set my finger in there without running the risk of it running up on the blade. But this right here, this little space to rest your, your thumb, I really like that. It's comfortable here back on the jimping, it's comfortable here, and it's also comfortable in the standard grip, which you can easily get a full, uh, full four finger purchase on. Um, I like that. Um, the, uh, you know, I th I'm sure some people are wondering, you know, with the with there not being as much weight out at the tip versus like the Spanto, right? Because that's really thick of the tip. Does the flipping action feel any different? No, n uh, not at all, actually. It's, there's, there's enough blade there and enough material where, you know, coupled with the fact that the detent is now just perfect on these guys, plenty heavy, you can get the flip every single time. Um, it's just going to work. Uh, this is just a, another beautiful example of you know, hinder, hinders, uh, you know, ability to create a, a functional and beautiful blade. Um, this one's got the working finish. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know the difference between working finish and tumbled, tumbled is more reflective. Working finish is a little bit more sort of concrete and scratchy. Some people, you know, definitely like this more. The benefit of having the working finish is that the contrast between the, um, like it comes stock with uh, the same polished hardware that you get with a stone washed finish. In fact, all most hinder knives come stock with that hardware. There's a nice contrast there. And with this one being, you know, a black G10 scale, it's really showing that. Um, it also shows really well with, you know, other anodized colors, things like that. As far as I know right now, there's only two forms of the Bowie in Triway and Generation 6, and that's the 20 CV standard, you know, this that's that's Hinder's uh, standard um, blade steel now is CPM 20 CV, which is great. That's That's the popular choice right now in the knife world, and it has been for a long time. Um, CPM 20 CV is made by Crucible in the United States, so that's great. Um, periodically, you will see M390 through DLT, which is an analog to 20 CV. It's just made by Bowler. Um, but uh, there's also the vintage, like I said earlier, there's a vintage 01, um, Parkerized 01 tool steel version of this in Triway. Other than that, um, we've not seen any other steels yet. Um, I, I'm going to predict, you know, with Hinderer having just released their very first blade in S45VN. I'm going to predict that we will eventually see a Bowie in S45. Um, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that, um, you know, Hinderer will, re this is just my guess, is that we're going to see a combination of S45VN and CPM 20 CV across the board for all blade, sh blade shapes, and you'll continue to see these different blade shapes in small batches. Actually, I say small batch. They're relatively large batch. For anybody who doesn't know, what Rick Hinderer likes to do with these different retailers, and you can commonly pick up Hinderer knives at like Blade HQ, DLT Trading, GP knives. Uh, you'll see them at Monkey Edge. You'll see them at um, USA Made Blade and tons and tons of other retailers. Generally, um, you'll see the reason that I chose like the retailers I have down below, DLT, Blade HQ, and GP, is that especially with DLT, the, right when something new comes out or a new version of something comes out, DLT seems to get a whole bunch of stuff all at once. Um, so you can, you know, go there and you can sign up for email notifications and be ready to go when something drops. But usually you have a, a couple of weeks to, uh, like, as soon as a batch of these drop, they're there for a couple of weeks, right? 
let's say, you know, when the Bowie came out, it was really, really popular and it went much faster. I think it was only available for a few days and then they were gone. And then there'll be maybe another wave of them and then Hinder will move on to something else. And then maybe um, six months to a year later, you'll see him return to the Bowie uh, or that blade shape and maybe do something just a little bit different. But um, Hinder Knives is constantly coming out with so many different things, so many different, um, you know, blade shapes and steels and different finishes and things like that. But that if you miss, you know, if you're looking at this and you're like, God, I want this. I just don't have the money for it right now. And, you know, I don't know if they're available. And when they are available, I'm not going to be ready. Um, by the time you are ready, there will undoubtedly be, if you're into Hinder Knives, if you're interested in them, right? If you appreciate this level of quality, right? This the tier that this is in, which is ultra high-end production, and you appreciate full USA-made knives, um, then by the time Hinder, you know, by the time you do have, you know, the funds to pay for what you want, Hinder will undoubtedly have something that will pique your interest, right? Um, so, like I said, I don't know if this is available right now. You know, some people are watching it the day that I uploaded it, and some people are going to be watching it a year or so in the future. Um, the link down there is set up to basically do a search for everything that's available. Um, through Hinder Knives, through uh, DLT, so you you know likely find something. But anyways, yeah, this is um, this is really excellent. I uh, I like the Bowie blade shape. It's out of all the different blade shapes that Hinderer does, the Bowie is. I've owned one for myself. I owned a Generation Four, probably. I want to say sorry. I'm shaking the camera. Probably something like four years ago, maybe five years ago, I picked one up on the secondary market and I liked it. It was great. I just found that I prefer the more, you know, the, the blade profiles that I tend to prefer are like the spear point and the spanto, um, the more, you know, just straightforward blade profiles. Um, but you know, is there anything like realistic when it comes down to what you're using your knives for, or what, what you would likely use these knives for, is there anything that these blade profiles can do that this one can't? Probably not. It's just going to be one, you know, blade profile is going to make certain tasks a little bit easier than others, right? Um, but, uh, you know, like I said, the name of the game here is versatility and durability when it comes to hinder knives and longevity, dependability, right? How many different words can I throw at it? Um, there's a lot of different reasons to pick up a hinder knife. And if you've been lusting over the Bowie and wondering if it's, you know, worth it, if it's a good blade shape, yeah, absolutely. I don't think hinder makes a bad blade shape. But I am a gigantic Kinder or not. I might be a little bit biased. This is my favorite brand. Um, I've owned 30, <laughs> legitimately 30 now Hinders. Um, but I also review a ton of different stuff on this channel. I've got about mm, closing in on 1,400 uploads. I have handled an insane amount of knives, uh, ranging from about 20 bucks all the way up to about $3,000. So. While I am a little bit biased, I certainly do have a lot to compare to and I've had a lot to think about and you know the same the same thing that I've said and many people will say, you know, it still applies to this knife. The um the flipper tab is a little bit pokey. It's kind of hook shaped, right? So it's not super comfortable. The landing zone after you flip it is pretty rough because we've got the jimping back here, right? Other than that though, I mean most of the other any other complaint that uh, people have about hinderer knives really has been resolved. Some people still complain that it's a proprietary pivot. It's not. This is a spanner bit, and then you can use a flathead screwdriver to undo it. It's really really easy. If that if those types of things bother you, right, the flipper tab situation, I would suggest looking at the Eclipse, which still has a bit of a hook shaped flipper tab, but uh, most of that is mitigated by the fact that your landing zone down here is completely smooth on the Eclipse. And outside of that, uh, the differences really are just the slight difference in the handle profile and then the fact that this is just a sharpening choil where this is a full forward choil, right? So there's also other knives in Hinderer's line that sort of cater to people that have complaints about this or that, right? Hinderer does a great job of offering different models, different blade profiles, different, you know, things that just, you know, work out for people. If you can, uh, a lot of people have a hard time with the price at first, but when you understand exactly how these are made and where they're made, right, and how they differ from, you know, production uh, knives like Spyderco, Benchmade ZT, or even some of your high-end uh, Chinese production brands like um, Wii, Bestec, Riot, right, then you can, you know, once you, you kind of understand the differences there, then the, the price is a lot more reasonable, you know, or at least that was my uh, perspective coming into this 
Anyways, this was another kind of weird hinder or ramble. Like I said, people looking for a full comprehensive review of the XM18, you didn't get it here, but you definitely can get it uh, on uh, the uh, the original uh, review of my Gen 6 XM18 and actually multiple reviews of, of uh, hinder knives in the past. But anyways, um, this was fun. Glad I got a chance to take a look at the Bowie. Uh, once again, thank you very much at Sharp underscore Marbles for uh, letting me take a look at this. Guys, I think that's going to be pretty much it today. Uh, make sure to follow me on Instagram. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.